Hello friends of Guys Express You in the spotlight. It's an honor to be part of this program of online lectures headed by Guys Trish. My name is Carlos Valadão, I'm from Brazil. I would like to take this opportunity to talk to you about the challenges of a vertical ridge argumentation through a clinical case. Okay, so let's start with the CT scan of the anterior maxillary region of this patient. Although the existing bone height seems to be sufficient, in fact, the patient had bone deficiency, not only in the vertical aspect, but also in the horizontal aspect. This deficiency is perfectly visible in clinical images. Actually, the patient had a fixed prosthesis with artificial gingiva. Here, we have the 3D printed view of the patient's bone structure. Note the considerable amount of vertical deficiency. Using the DTX Studio software, we can measure the three-dimensional deficiency, 21 millimeters in length, more than eight millimeters in height, and eight millimeters in thickness. Comparing the 3D bone view with the clinical view, we can see the remaining vertical defect in this aesthetic region. This is an occlusal view. Notice the enlargement of the incisor foramen. We use the same software to analyze the posterior mandibular region. From where we are going to obtain the autogenous graph. You can see a nice amount of bone, so very safely. And we are also going to use bone scrapers, so it's going to be less trauma for the patient. So let's move on to the GBR surgery. I'd like to draw your attention to the pronounced vertical bone deficiency in this clinical image. We opted for a partial lateralization of the nasopalatine bundle, as described by Urban Jovanovic Boozer and Bornstein in 2015. After the deflection of the neurovascular bundle, the composite bone graft was placed into the region of the incisor foramen, partially into the canal, and then horizontally and vertically around the defect. The membrane used was a dense PTFE titanium reinforced membrane the cytoplast. The bone graft was a mixture with autogenous bone and bios in equal proportions, as already widely described in the literature. I would like to point out a particularly important step is the release of the flap to obtain a passive closure without tension. This is the final aspect with the PTFE suture in place. This is the 45 day clinical view. As a matter of fact, I do the evaluation of my patients who undergo to GBR procedures in a weekly basis in the first month, and then every month until completing nine month period of the graft maturation. Unfortunately, during the fifth month, something unbelievable happened. The patient got involved in a fight and was hit in the face by a punch. Can you believe that? Whoa, those things happen. So what we can do? Well, in addition to the clinical evaluation, of course, we also did an X-ray evaluation and a tomograph evaluation. As we can see here in this image. Luckily, there was no bone fracture and no dental fracture. In the CT scan, the graph seems to be fine with excellent volume when compared to the initial image. You can see here the region of the central incisor before and after, the region of, of the left central incisor before and after, and also in the place of the lateral incisor before and after. We also did a comparison with periapical x-rays before and after. So everything seems to be fine. So we continue with the clinical evaluation of the patient. There was no exposure, no sign of infection. However, we can notice that between the seven and eight months, up to the nine months, there was an apparent loss of volume. We can see here in those bottom images. 
the fifth month, and now in the ninth month. We seem to be there losing particles, part of the graph. This can also be seen in the tomograph image. Part of the graph was lost, especially between the central, left central incisor and the lateral incisor. Start all over again and do a new planning. So the new planning was, let's do the Dixie's prosthesis again with the artificial gingiva, and we're probably gonna do a new GBR procedure. This is a clinical view of the graft. What was happening according to Uber's classification was a low-grade infection. We must remove the membrane. We prescribed amoxicillin, 500 milligram, three times a day, and did the surgery, following the proposed protocol. The treatment indicated was, of course, the removal of the membrane, and also the removal of part of the graft that looks necrotic. It has a gray, grayish coloration, we lose particles. The site was irrigated with a saline solution and a doxycycline paste was used for three minutes in the place and then washed out with saline again. The viable graft was then protected with a bioguide membrane. I believe that we could save probably 60% of the graft. This is the aspect of the suture. Let's turn now to two months after this intervention. We definitely need to do another vertical bone augmentation. This is the clinical view of the interpersonal bone peaks, interproximal bone peaks during the second surgery of GBR. The vertical bone deficiency was still present, especially between the central and lateral incisor. At this critical point, we decided to use a turn screw. We used the same graft composed of autogenous bone and bios. However, this time, liquid fibrinogen, IPRF, obtained from the patient's blood after centrifugation of 2,700 RPM for three minutes, we obtained the IPRF. And we think that as it facilitates graft adduction, besides containing growth fracture, it's a good idea to use that. Everything was then covered by a cytoplasm membrane. Now we have here the clinical view of the cytoplasm membrane, fixate in the palate with screws, and a tent screw in the place. Now we are putting, you can see here in the video, the composite graft already embedded with the IPRF liquid. We are going to use again more IPRF over the side. Then we're going to fold the membrane and immobilize everything with the screws. And here we are going to use, we are going, we are using releasing the releasing the flap. Another difference when compared with the first surgery is that this time LPRF membranes were used over the cytoplasm membrane. The LPRF, in addition to the presence of leukocytes, has several growth factors that improve tissue healing. We finish with horizontal mattress sutures with single interrupted sutures. This is the LPRF membranes. We obtain also from the patient's blood after centrifugation, 2,700 RPM for 12, 12 minutes. So this is the periapical x-ray after nine months. Now everything seems to be fine. These are the, the CT scan after nine months. Wow. So how good were the results? In the CT scan, we can notice that even a greater bone volume than that of the first surgery. You can see here, you also can see here. In the middle image, we can also see the tense growth in position. Oh, well, these are the clinical evaluation at nine months. Everything was going well, so we did the virtual planning of the implants. And I would like us to take a look 
at the appearance of the membrane before its removal. Everything should be, seems to be fine, really. Observe the bone volume here in the horizontal aspect and also in the vertical aspect, horizontal and vertical. We can see here that the titanium mass seems to be like printed in the bone. It really looks nice. The bone really looks vital and there was no soft tissue between the membrane and the bone. So everything is fine now. A nice amount of bone regeneration. So the implants were installed in a conventional way with a surgical guide. A secondary graft was used with 30% of autogenous bone mixed with BIOS. As demonstrated by Urban, this graft protects the new formed bone, especially in the crest region. The graft was then covered with a bioguide membrane and mobilized with resorbable sutures. A connected tissue graft removed from the palate was positioned in the site, held in place with internal resorbable sutures. The connected tissue graft was used to increase the thickness of the tissue, with the intention also to boost the gingival biotype of this patient. This is a periapical x ray of the implants after six months. I would like to point out that. After the second stage surgery, the implants were surrounded by a good amount of and thickness of keratinite tissue. Well, now I would like to recap the main points of this particular clinical case. What I learned from this case is that in addition to mock clinical evaluations, a simple periapical x-ray can be particularly useful in a GBR for all. The patient blood derivates was included in the treatment once they could increase the biological potential of the GBR by increasing the concentration of growth factors and other bioactive compounds that support the vascularization and regeneration of hard and soft tissues. Well, that brings me to the end of my presentation. So, thank you very much for your kindly attention.